everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to do some rebel canning. What does rebel canning mean? It means it's not FDA approved. This is a recipe that the rebels are doing. It's working. But FDA says nope, not safe, not recommended. So you make your judgment call. You can make what I'm making and put it in the freezer or the fridge if you choose. Or you can can it as I'm going to do. But you decide. I'm letting you know up front so you guys can make that decision for yourself. So today we're going to be doing some pumpkin butter. <sighs> FDA says pumpkin can only be canned if you can it cubed in water. Um, not in puree form. Pumpkin butter is obviously going to be pureed. So that's why not FDA approved. But we're going to show you how to make some pumpkin butter and I'm going to show you how I can it. You decide what you want to do. So for starters, we need to cook up the pumpkins. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do that and also how to identify a pie pumpkin between a carver. Carvers can be used, but carvers also are stringier and just not as tasty. So again, your judgment call. I'm using pie pumpkins. Let's dive in. So first things first, you have to open up that pumpkin, get the guts out and the seeds out. The seeds I'll save so I can roast those later. Um, we've had a lot of those this year, but how you can tell if this is a pie pumpkin or a carver this is a white pumpkin so that's kind of somewhat of a giveaway maybe when you look at it but a carver if you recall when you carve it this interior meat is very thin it's maybe maybe a half inch thick so you have a very thin wall um so it's easy to carve into for pie pumpkins you're going to have a much thicker wall see how much thicker that skin is it is a lot thicker than a carver so this is a pie pumpkin. Now, once you clean it out, it's not cleaned out perfect, but it's cleaned out as best as I can. The skin does have to come off, but the skin is not easy to get off unless you want to car um, use like a knife and carve it off or a peeler, but you're also going to lose some of this precious meat as well in the process. So what I do is I throw it in the pressure cooker. Yes, the pressure cooker. You can also roast it in the oven, but the pressure cooker is so much faster. I prefer that method. I throw it in the pressure cooker for 20 minutes, guys. 20 minutes, that's it, once it builds up pressure. That's what takes the longest. And then once it's done, let it come down naturally to pressure. And this skin, once it's cool enough to touch, will basically peel right off. I'll show you when we get to that. But let's throw this into the pressure cooker now, and we will come back. So once your pumpkin has cooked and pressure has dropped and you've gotten it out, um, you're going to see now how just easy, how, just how easy it is to peel that skin off. It does not take any work. It is the way to go for sure to, to, to peel them, cook them, even if you're just cooking them for immediate use to eat. This is the way you cook some pumpkins. That's the string. But you just, literally, it just peels right off. Um, so you're going to peel all of them. And then you're going to put them in, I've already peeled a lot of them, to the bowl to mash them up with the other ingredients. But that's how easy it is. That's how white pumpkin looks when it's cooked, by the way. It kind of comes out a little bit orange, but not very orange. Um, but it's fully cooked, as you can see. So I'll bring you back when I get to the next steps can't hold the camera and do this <laughs> okay guys so we are ready to start making that pumpkin butter I already have it's seven cups of pumpkin puree in the pot I'm doing a double batch so if you want a double batch you're gonna follow my instructions otherwise divide it by two so let's start putting the ingredients in so for my double batch I am going to need one, oh, it's actually two cups of brown sugar. I'm going off the single batch. I'm using a half cup, so I, you guys are used to this with me. I always seem to have the wrong size. I've dirtied the other ones and don't feel like going and cleaning them right this second. So, got one. I need four total of the half cups, but it's two cups worth. Lots of brown sugar. This is um, pumpkin butter, guys. So, there's our brown 
sugar. Now we need um, one and a half cups of apple cider or juice. I got Four teaspoons of vanilla extract. Then we need anywhere from four to six um, cinnamon sticks. And then one to four teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. That's to taste. Once you have everything mixed in, you're gonna mix it up and then you're going to let it cook for 30 to 40 minutes. Um, bring it to a boil and then you reduce it to a simmer for 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm going to start this up, mix it up, let it simmer for that 30 to 40 minutes, and I'll bring you back. So guys, this has been on the stove kind of simmering for about probably an hour. I've been doing a lot of other things, making pumpkin dog treats right now to use up the last of this pumpkin. So just kind of been busy, but it's ready. I added a little bit of allspice, not much, um, and it tastes pretty amazing. So that's ready to get put into the jars. The jars have been sitting in the pressure canner um, warming up because you don't want to shock the jars by putting a hot product into a cold jar or vice versa. You always want to make sure they're about the same temperature. So those are ready to go. I can actually stop the boil. It doesn't need to be boiling. And we're fogging up. Sorry, guys. So we're going to get the hot jars out and hot pack the apple butter. Apple butter, banana butter. See? Can't think straight. It's apple and banana. It yelled at me. So for this, we're going to take your funnel, put it over the jar. These are wide mouth, so the funnel I have doesn't fit as perfect. You don't want to put the cinnamon sticks in. Those can get discarded, but you're just going to take a scoop and fill up your jars. You want it to be about half inch headspace. I usually go to like right where the bottom of the band go or, or where the band is. Use this handy dandy little tool to kind of get the air bubbles out and push it all down. I think I might have filled this a little too much. Nope, it's good. Now, as I always say, because um, I'm using this funnel, my rims don't get stuff on it. I don't bother with wiping mine down, but you should um, wipe it down if there's any worry of that. So, I'm not going to bother with that. I am going to grab my next jar out so I can put my funnel straight into the jar. I just bought these jars yesterday. They had some in the store, which has been very hard to find lately. Oop. So once that, you take your sterilized lids. Honestly, they actually say you don't necessarily have to have them sterilized anymore. Um, finger t tight um, on there. I don't know how much you guys are seeing because it's kind of foggy. And then you can put that right back into the canner before it cools down too much. You don't want it to cool down a lot and then break your jar. Thermal shock is real, guys. Make sure in your canner you have a rack or at least a towel at the bottom to keep the glass off the bottom of the canner. And in the pressure canner you do not fill the water up past the rims. You're just uh, usually about two quarts worth of water is all you need. Pretty simple, right? I'm going to fill all these jars up, and then we're going to get the pressure canner going. Like I said, this is a rebel canning technique. Um, 
because it is a pumpkin puree. <laughs> so technically, it is a rebel canning. You could just mix this up. I'm throwing things. And put it in your fridge unless you want to take your chances like I do. That sounds really bad, but but I've made it before. And I feel confident. I will say if you decide to can this, it is recommended when you do anything in the pressure canner, even stuff that they say is safe, that you always boil your pressure canned goods for 15 minutes before consuming it. That will kill any botulism toxins that there could possibly be. But I will come back when we get to something else. Once your jars are in the pressure canner, you put that lid on and you're going to bring it up to pressure. First, you're going to wait for this spot right here to start having a ton of steam coming out. That's, well, you're also going to turn it up to high. But once the steam starts coming out, you start your timer for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're going to put your weight on. For my area, 10 pounds is the weight that you would use, 15 pounds in other areas. So make sure you look up the what weight you would use for your area and then you're going to let it bring up to pressure. Once that weight starts to rock gently, not horribly fast, you're going to start your timer for 90 minutes with pumpkin. So I'm going to let this get up to steam. And I probably won't bring you back until we have the rocker on there and it's starting to rock gently. Because it's really hard to show the steam on the camera. You don't really see it because it's, it's not very dark. So we will be back. Okay, guys. So... I failed. I got busy. I was making pumpkin dog treats with the leftover pumpkin. So I forgot to bring you back and show you what the rocking looks like. But this is the gauge that you put on um, once you reach the pressure. Basically, this will start to rock. Basically does that. That's how you know it's up to pressure. It's supposed to do that for the full 90 minutes. Once your 90 minutes is up, you can turn the heat off, which is where we're at now. And you let it come down to temp and down like reduce pressure naturally don't rip this off this won't open it's got safety features it's not going to open until the pressure is dropped see that little red thing right there that tells you the pressure has not dropped so let it drop pressure once it drops pressure you can take the lid off make sure you turn the lid away from you when you open it because there's a lot of steam in there and you can take the jars out and put them onto a towel don't just put them on a counter because that could cause shock again and cause the glass to break. Going from an extreme heat to that cold counter can cause them to break. So make sure you put them down on a counter, or on a towel, not a counter, and you let them cool down for 12, or 24 to 48 hours. I usually do 24 hours. I'm going to show you some other seals on how you check the seals, and that, instead of these ones, just because I want to get this video done. So, I'll be right back. Now, once it's done and out of the um, pressure canner, it's waited the 24 hours. You're going to clean the lids and clean the jars in some soapy water. These ones still have to be cleaned. And then you're going to take the ring off. You don't want to leave that ring on in storage because that can cause undue pressure on the seal, causing a premature seal leak. So, you don't want to do that. But you take that off. It's all cleaned. You write what it is onto the... Um, top of the jar and then just make sure when you pick up from the lid that lid doesn't come off that means it's a good tight seal also make sure there's no um, funky dents or indentations going on and then you can put it on your shelf it's ready to store for at least a year um, some people have stored them for two three four ten years yes I just jumped like crazy but they are at least good for one solid year after being canned um, ball cans, ball jars now have on their lid, um, sure tight seal guaranteed for 18 months. So they're, they're upping the amount of time that they're guaranteeing as long as you can, according to protocol. So hope you guys learned something. Have a blessed day and we'll catch you on the next one.